Hi guys. Okay, so we're moving into chapter 12. Chapter 12 is actually a continuation of chapter 11, focusing on the four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. So here are our learning objectives. Explain the concept of a total product offer and summarize the functions of packaging. Con contrast brand, brand name, and trademark. Describe the product life cycle. Identify various pricing objectives and strategies and explain why non-pricing strategies are growing in importance. Number five, explain the concept of marketing channels and the value of marketing intermediaries. Discuss the differences between wholesale and retail intermediaries and explain the various kinds of non-store retailing. Number seven, define promotion and list the traditional tools that make up the promotional mix. And finally, we're going to assess the effectiveness of various forms of sales promotion. Lots to do in this chapter. The lecture is going to be a little bit longer than usual. So let's look at the, the definition first of value. Value is what customers perceive as the best value depending on many factors. So when we look at value, you and I, what do we do? We compare price and the quality of what we're getting, and we try to get a balance. Developing a total product offer. Products are evaluated on many different dimensions, both tangible and intangible. Remember, tangible means you can touch, taste, smell something. Intangible is the opposite. It's more of an idea. Marketers must think, think like and talk to consumers to find out what's important. So a product line. A product line is a group of items for a similar market that usually face similar competition. They may, can, they may have contain competing brands. The product mix is the product lines that a manufacturer produces. Differentiation, real or perceived product differences. Differentiation is uh, comes in a, a lot of times comes in when discussing the product life cycle. For example, detergents. How many times have we heard about a new Tide? Right, there was Tide. Then there's Super Tide. Then there's Tide Extra. Then there's Tide Pods. Then there's Tide with bleach. Right, every time a man the manufacturer sees the sales slip. They come up with a new tie. Sometimes it is a perceived difference. Sometimes it's an actual change in the product. Remember, I think we've talked about this. Coke and New Coke. Remember, New Coke was a horrible disaster. Within several weeks, Coke had to go back to its original product. And it didn't call it just Coke. It called it Coke now I can't remember. Coke Classic. Right. So first you had New Coke, then you had Coke Classic. Functions of packaging. Attract the buyer's attention. Protect the goods inside. Stand up under handling and storage. Be tamper-proof and deter theft. Potato chips, right? Didn't you ever wonder why the bag is only half full? Because it's full of air, and that air helps in the protection of the chips in transit. Be easy to open and use. We've, we've all had products that were difficult to open, right? Like there's new water bottles where they, they reduce the cap so it's thinner, and because it's thinner, it's sometimes harder to turn. Describe and give information about the contents, Explain the benefits of the good inside. Provide information on warranties, warning, warnings, and other consumer matters. So we get a lot of the, the packaging does a lot. It provides a lot of information as well as being the container for the product. Brand includes practically all means of identifying a product. Brand name gives products a distinction that tends to make them attractive to consumers. For example, how many people 
Obviously, you can't raise your hand, but how many people blow their nose with a Kleenex, right? Give me a Kleenex. I hear, they don't hear that all the time. Well, actually, Kleenex is a brand name for a facial tissue. So think about that the next time, yes. And there's lots of products that come under that category. Trademark gives a brand exclusive legal protection. So brand equity. Brand equity is the value of the brand name and associated symbols. Brand loyalty, the core for brand equity. It's that gives it that value. Um, I give the example in class, typically, if I, if I own five Starbucks stores in the Antelope Valley and I had $100,000 worth of assets in each store, that means from the book's perspective, the, the book stores are worth 500 grand. But if I asked you for $3 million for five Starbucks stores, you'd probably be interested, at least, if not jumping at the chance to do it. Why? The assets are only worth 500 grand because of the name Starbucks. Starbucks is a brand and it has great loyalty. Brand management. A brand manager manages one product or product line and the brand manager includes all elements of the marketing mix. Ah, and we come to the product life cycle. Every product has a life cycle. Just like we do, people have a life cycle. Well, the four stages of the life cycle are introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. Sounds like our lives, isn't it? So here's a picture. So introduction. All electric cars are about here. Some products get really big. They start to sell big. So that's the growth stage. In terms of hybrid cars, this was maturity. Maturity is where you reach the peak sales. Now you can maintain that for quite a while, but eventually there are gonna be other products on the market. There may be better products on the market and you'll start to see the decline. And this decline is where companies start to add a little bit, a little bit of something to the product to try to level out the sales and maintain them a little longer. What are the objectives of pricing? Achieving a target return on investment or profit. Ultimately, the goal of marketing is to make a profit by providing goods and services. So the price determines what your profit's gonna be. If you have a target return, your price has to meet that target return. Building traffic, maybe I have lower pricing in order to build traffic. Look at Walmart, perfect example. Walmart's prices are very low, right? They have a very low profit margin. However, their sales in 2021, I believe, were $530 billion. So they built considerable traffic and obviously, they're the biggest retailer in, in the world. Creating an image. Pricing creates an image. I used to work for Haagen-Dazs. haagen, -Dazs. haagen -Dazs was a premium ice cream. You paid a premium price, but the image was you paid that premium price because you're getting a better quality product. Furthering social objectives also for pricing. Cost-based pricing. Essentially, cost-based pricing says I'm going to take what it costs me to make the product, I'm going to multiply it times something, and that's going to give me the price, and it's going to include my profit and cost. Also includes the expected costs of product updates, the marketing objectives for each product, etc. Demand-based pricing satisfies customer and meets profit margins. And then there's obviously competition. If uh, there are a lot of other companies producing the same product that you have, you gotta cut your price in order to really, price, cutting price is really the only way to beat the competition. How market forces affect pricing? Demand-oriented pricing is based on consumer demand. So the more demand there is, we've seen that over COVID, right? Demand increased for many things, and that caused the price to increase. Excuse me. <coughs> Online price checking. 
the fact that I can go online with my phone and check prices while I'm standing in the store has considerably increased the competition. Non-price competitions, product image, and consumer, ven consumer benefits. Those are things that are not related to price, but they add to the competition. These are marketing intermediaries. Let's look at consumer goods. So the manufacturer selling straight to the consumer, that's typically craftspeople and small farmers. Your farmer's market kind of thing is that type of channel. Ma manufacturer to retailer to consumer, that's like cars, furniture. The most common channel is manufacturer to wholesaler to retailer to consumer. That's for con most consumer goods. I always use the same example. You wouldn't actually go to uh, Kellogg's in Detroit or whatever, wherever they are, to buy cornflakes, right? That would make no sense. And they wouldn't sell you a box of cornflakes. So what, what Kellogg's does is they sell their cornflakes to a wholesaler who then resells those cornflakes to the retailer, the supermarket and such. And then the retailer actually sells you the cornflakes. Common channel for food items such as produce, farmer to a broker. Broker acts similar to a wholesaler, but then the broker sells to the wholesaler, retailer, and on. How intermediaries create exchange efficiency. Intermediaries perform certain marketing tasks such as transporting, storing, selling, and building relationships, which is really important faster and more cheaply than the manufacturer could. If the manufacturer, again, if we go to Kellogg's, if they were delivering 5 million boxes of cornflakes to 5 million consumers, imagine the delivery problem for that. Retail sale is the sale of goods and services to consumers for personal use. Wholesale sailor, sale rather, the sale of goods and services to businesses and institutions like schools, hospitals, etc., for use in the business or to wholesalers or retailers for resale. So we've got a lot of language in this chapter too that you need to really get a handle on. Merchant wholesalers, independently owned firms that take title to the goods they handle. 80% of wholesalers are merchant, merchant wholesalers. Then there are agents and brokers. Agents and brokers do not carry inventory. They simply facilitate the sale. Retailers sell to the ultimate consumers. Competition from Amazon, right? Retail distribution strategies, intensive distribution, selective or exclusive. And you have different products connected to the different types of distribution. Online retailing, obviously we're all, we're all uh, familiar with that because we're all buying online, aren't we? Definitely big time competing with brick and mortar stores. And the big difference for many, many, many years between online retailing and brick and mortar was the fact that you could walk into a brick and mortar store and buy something today, right? You get it in your hands right away. You satisfy that need. You couldn't do that with online retailing years ago. You were waiting five days, seven days, sometimes even longer. But uh, thanks to companies like Amazon, that difference has now pretty much disappeared. Right? We can order online and get, with, get things within two days, three days. Sometimes Amazon can deliver same day. Uh, telemarketing, vending machines, kiosks, carts. Those, we see all those things everywhere. Pop-ups, we're seeing them all over. You see them in the mall, if anybody still goes to the mall. Choosing the right distribution mode. Supply chain. Supply chain is where the raw materials and the manufacturer stuff comes to us. We noticed that we had lot, we've had lots of talk about supply chain over the last year or so. Because of COVID, things stopped being supplied. So there was a cut in the supply chain, which meant that there was 
nothing on the store shelves. We went to the supermarket. Well, that's changing, but slowly. Mode of transportation is important with regards to the supply chain. Faster the mode, higher the cost, right? If you have things delivered by plane, it's going to cost you a lot more than it's delivered by truck or by train. Here's the supply chain. Supplier's plant. Whoops. Wow. I jumped. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. So we have the supplier's plant to the manufacturer. The manufacturer, the wholesaler, the wholesaler to the retailer. Now, if your supplier's plant is in China and your manufacturer is in Taiwan, if something happens to stop that movement, like a like a, a pandemic that causes problems with the shipping, then the wholesaler doesn't get the product. The retailers have nothing, and the consumer has nothing to buy. So here is the promotion mix. We have advertising. Remember, we also, I asked in class what they thought about promotion. Typically, when people think about promotion, they think about advertising. But it's more than that. It's personal selling. It's promotion. It's concerts. Um, special events, public relations, handling problems when something happens in the public. Advertising is informing, persuading, and reminding. The sender is identified in the message. The ads are informative. They give us information about the product, about the company. It pays the production costs of TV and radio programs and the major costs of producing newspapers and magazines. So there are a lot of third parties who, whose uh, needs are satisfied by the dollars that are spent on advertising. Television, obviously expensive. Still dominant in spite of the rise of online and social media advertising. However, you need to look at what's the cost of advertising for streaming, because streaming is now getting seriously into advertising. As a matter of fact, Amazon, um, Netflix announced last week that they're now going to add a lower rate. I think it was $6.99, which was the original, <laughs> the original Netflix charge, if you're willing to take advertising. Online advertising. Search engines push consumers to websites. Clicking on an ad gives the company access to names, addresses, opinions, preferences, all sorts of information. Online advertising spending is now greater than both print and television, while print uh, newspaper advertising has kind of disappeared for a lot of places. Includes email marketing. Social media. Companies can measure how many times a post is viewed. How many times it's shared, right? We're looking at TikTok. We're looking at uh, YouTube. We're advertising in places that was there was never advertising before. Global advertising, developing a single product and promotional strategy that can be implemented worldwide. Challenging thing to do. Personal selling, providing personal attention, and that's, we talked about this a little bit in chapter 11, about this being the personal era of selling. Public relations, all about building relationships with consumers, evaluates public attitudes about things, changes the policies and procedures of the company in response to the public's request. What's the biggest one we're seeing these days? The green techno, the green push, right? Every company is telling us about how green they are, how protecting of the environment they are. If you notice on the last, if you notice in streaming over the last month or so, we've been seeing a lot more advertising from car manufacturers about their electric cars. Executes a program of action and information to earn public understanding. So that public relations is really what stands between the company and you. 
Sales promotion is designed to supplement personal selling, advertising, and public relations. And it takes place within and outside the company. You have sales training, sales aids, audio-visual displays and videos, trade shows, sampling a product, right? Go to Costco. You're getting samples all the time. And that takes care of Chapter 12. Please remember, give me a call, send me a text. If you need some help, I'm here for you. Have a great week.